just arrived at the Buck Institute. Now, their mission is simple, to end the threat of age-related disease for us and for future generations. It's a pretty impressive looking building. It's home to the scientist who helped understand one of the fundamental processes that makes us age, Professor Judy Campisi. So tell me more about the mission of the scientists here at the Buck. Well, the mission of the Buck Institute is really to be able to extend years of healthy life. And so sort of one of our mottos is that there's no reason why you can't enjoy life at 95 as much as you do at 25. Oh, that does sound wonderful, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes. So through your career, you've been working to solve lots of different scientific problems. When did the piece of the puzzle fall into place for you around ageing? It really fell into place when we were studying this phenomenon called senescence. Senescence is a cellular process where the cells in our body stop dividing. So this is a cell that is stressed or somehow damaged and it makes a decision to enter a state where it no longer divides and that's good because you don't want stressed or damaged cells to be dividing. Mm. That could cause cancer. Mm. But at the same time, the cell is sort of telling its neighbors, I'm in trouble. When those signals come from a senescent cell, say as opposed to a wound or a cut in your skin, the body can't turn it off. So senescent cells are constantly putting out these signals to alert the body to this problem. And one of the things that those signals do is it causes the immune system to begin to react and that is called inflammation. As we age, the accumulation of senescent cells causes chronic inflammation, a key driver for many of the diseases of ageing. The process of cell senescence is a normal part of our biology. To help with wound healing, to help with embryogenesis, to help with um, labour. All of those processes involve a little bit of senescent cells for a short period of time. For most of our evolutionary history, lifespan was short. 99.99% .99 of people were dead before senescent cells ever had a chance to accumulate and begin to drive these diseases that we associate with aging. The key breakthrough came when Judy and her team were able to observe senescent cells under the microscope. So let me show you these amazing cells. Look at this. So obviously this one is not senescent and this one is senescent. You can see the huge difference mm. in the way they it, look. It's really striking, isn't it? A normal healthy human cell is neat and round in appearance but the senescent cell looks like it's been squashed. It's big and flat like a pancake. Judy and her team started studying these cells in intense detail, uncovering how they cause the tissue degradation associated with ageing. I'm looking down the microscope at these cells and most of them are stained blue, so most of these cells are senescent. And I came to the Buck Institute because I was really curious to understand more about the biology underlying ageing. And if I look down the microscope, I think what I'm seeing is one of the biggest pieces in the puzzle as to what underlies why we age. Aren't they beautiful? They are, they are. So how do you feel when you see these cells and know that you've made such a huge contribution to this field of research? Well, that feels great, but I'll tell you what feels even greater. They still surprise us. They still are telling us things that we didn't know. Judy's team are developing new medicines designed to seek out and destroy these worn out cells. I'm meeting with Australian scientist, Dr. Simon Milov, who's working on this exciting prospect. What you're looking at here is a senescent cell. This is thought to be the origin of what's called sterile inflammation. 
these inflammatory factors are being spewed out of these senescent cells and affecting the whole environment around it. It's mm. like having a dirty power plant uh, mm. in, a, in, a, in a town mm. or a city. Mm. There are a, a whole host of, of bad outcomes from increasing our inflammatory load as we get older. Mm. Things like arthritis, mm. um, poor performance in multiple mm. different tissues, uh, impair cognition. He's developing a medicine called a senolytic that targets senescent cells within specific organs. And it's already showing promising results in heart disease in mice. So here we have a young heart uh, slowed down so that we can follow the contraction of the ventricle. And you can see the ventricle is squeezing the blood very efficiently out as it moves the blood around the mouse's body. In contrast, this is an old heart from, from an animal. Now in contrast to the young animal, this is um, larger. Uh, it is beating very asynchronously and what we really want to do is eliminate senescent cells from an older animal and see if we can make this heart behave like this heart. So, so we believe in the future the way to clear senescent cells from the body would be to use a drug called a senolytic. This would remove senescent cells and therefore improve tissue function at multiple different levels throughout the body. The hope is that senolytics will reverse the diseases of ageing. I know plenty of people, my dad, my stepdad, who have had heart bypass surgery. Is this the kind of thing that in the future they may be able to be treated with senolytics instead of having to have open heart surgery? Well, that, that's the goal. Uh, I'd go so far as to say that the approach of targeting ageing instead of individual diseases of ageing will transform the world's healthcare as we know it. Human trials of senolytic drugs have recently begun, and while they still could take a few years to reach us, if they work, and for now that's still an if, their potential impact is enormous.